All right, let's go ahead and get started. I am sharing uh, the PDF um, instead of using Google Slides so that I can um, have half of my screen because we're going to be um, doing the hands-on sort of interactively during the presentation. But if you have a hard time seeing the, the PDF, please let me know and we'll figure something out. So today we are going to be talking about the installation of MET and MET Plus. And my name is Julie Prostomnik and I'm presenting on behalf of our team. And so first, um, you may not even need to install MET and MET Plus. For each release, uh, MET Plus keeps an existing builds page, and we indicate which uh, NCAR machines, NOAA machines, and community machines that MET and MET Plus have already been installed on for users, along with how to obtain MET and MET Plus uh, through a Docker container. So for example, um, we typically install on Cheyenne and Casper and some local machines at NCAR, along with Venus and Mars on WCOS for NOAA, and Hera, Orion, and JET. Um, we also install on Stampede 2. So I've listed the URLs here below. Um, each release has its own existing builds page. And if we go over to the, the MET Plus DTC Center webpage and we go to the download screen, you can see here we've got our recommended stable releases. And if you click on the existing builds page for any one of these, it'll take you to the same place. And this is our 4.0 existing builds page. And so there's a little uh, accordion here that you can scroll down and you can get information on how to load MET and MET Plus on those machines. And likewise, for our development releases, our beta releases here, we also install those on some machines as well. And then when they become the stable version, uh, their existing builds page will also be updated. So again, note this is for 4.1. And then uh, if you use the accordion drop down here, you can see uh, what the most recent beta release is on these machines here. Let's go back. We'll want to be here again. OK, so you may not even need to install MET Plus, but if you do, we'll walk through that today. And we should talk about the minimum requirements. So the minimum requirements of MET Plus wrappers is MET itself, and then Python 3.6.3 or above with a date util package. And so today we'll first walk through installing MET and then we'll do MET plus. And we will, um, for MET, we will use an existing compile MET all script from the MET downloads page, which I'll show you in just a minute. And we will first demonstrate installing all of MET's dependent libraries and MET itself on a local NCAR machine. And then we will install only MET using pre-installed dependent libraries on the NOAA HPC WCOS Venus. So we'll do that today. But if we go to the download page for MET, right now we're on MET Plus. So we'll select MET and download. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you can see there's this section here, sample script for compiling external libraries in MET. And the directions for using the script and um, the packages necessary are all right here on this page as well. And we'll step through those uh, using the slides. But it is here for your reference. And of course, if you have any questions, you know, you feel free to ask today, but also um, feel free to submit discussions, a discussion um, in the MET Plus discussions area, and, and we can get you some help there if you have any trouble. OK, so first we will talk about the installation of all dependent libraries, MET and MET Plus. So the first thing we need to do is set up an installation directory for MET and go to that location. And I've already uh, set up the directories. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then we need to download the compile MET all script and set the permissions um, to make the script executable. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that command. And I'll go over to my terminal window. Oops. OK, so I've set up this directory here. And if I look, I've got a MET directory where I want to put the MET installation. I also like to organize it according to the, the build. So in this case, or the version. So in this case, the version that I want to install is 10.1.0-beta5. Um, and then when 10.1.0 was released, I could do it in the same area in its own subdirectory. You, of course, can organize it however you like. I'm just demonstrating a personal preference here. So I started a bare bones configuration file, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But right now, it looks like that copy and paste did not work. So bear with me just a second. I think I am going to need the slides to be able to copy that, which is fine. They are right here. OK, 
I did test this beforehand, so it should work. Oh, okay, so the wget command was successful and the permissions were changed to be executable. So we're all set there. Now that this is in um, slides but not in present mode, please go ahead and speak up if you have any questions or problems seeing it um, and, and we'll see what we can do. I can switch back and forth if, if I need to. So now we've gotten the, uh, the script that we need and now we need to get the dependent library package. So that is in a file called tar files and, um, and then we're gonna unpack the tar files and then we'll change into that directory. So this is getting all the dependent libraries necessary to install MET, but it is not getting MET itself. Going on to the next slide, we'll see that we need to go ahead and download the version of MET that we want from the downloads page. So let's go and take a look at that. So we can go back to the, the MET Plus page that has all of the MET Plus components installations. And we'll click on download again. And we can see here, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a development version. And it looks like uh, the latest development version here is MET 10.1.0 beta 5, uh, beta 6 to come out very soon. So that should be released this week. Uh, so we'll stick with this right now. So we're going to go ahead and copy our wget command to get the, the MET package so that we can install that as well. And this one, we don't have to unpack. The script will do it for us. So we'll just unpack it. And now we can take a look at what we have here. So you can see there are lots of uh, external packages and including MET itself right here. So now we need to uh, set up our configuration file. And there are example configuration files that you can find in the MET Hub GitHub, GitHub repository. And you can see those over here. So there are example config files if you want to take a look at how things are done. Um, some of these, I, I, you can see I started putting uh, met env all to show that on Cheyenne, for example, um, we're installing all the libraries and met. And then down here, it's just met only. So if I had already done it and I didn't need to um, install the dependent libraries anymore, the, the file is slightly different. And so I've, I've saved both here. So we're going to go back a directory. And I've already started um, a configuration file here, like I mentioned. I typically like to name it install met env and then the machine name. So that's why it's named in that way. But again, you can, you can name it something different if you'd like. So we'll go ahead and open up in an Emacs. And we can see that the first environment variable we need to set is test space, which is the installation directory. So I want to install it in the directory I'm in. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We'll use that as the test base. So I'll just paste that in right there. OK. And then the next variable we need to set is the compiler. And the format is the compiler underscore the version. So in this case, um, for using the GCC compiler, the keyword that the, the script is expecting is GNU. Um, there are comments in the script that let you know. Intel sometimes can have various um, uh, names for itself, and it maybe depends on your machine. And that's really only necessary if you're using module files, which we're not doing now, so we'll we'll talk about that later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use GNU version 8.3.0. And for the MET subder, and that's the location where you want the top MET level subder, for example, MET-10.1.0-beta5. dash And I usually just make that the same as the test space. So as you can see here, I've already set it to the test space environment variable. Now we need to, to know the name of the MET tarball, which is right here. Oh, no, actually, it's slightly different, I believe. So let's go ahead and get the, na the exact name from our tarball directory. It has the date in it. So we'll want to copy that name so that the code knows which file to find. Paste that right in there. OK. And then use modules. So you set it to false if the machine you're installing on does not use module files. If you're not running module load, then you're not using module files. And in this case, we're not doing that, so I'm going to set this to false. But we will step through the case on WCOS where we do use module files, and we'll show the differences there. OK. So those are all the required environment variables for the script, um, unless you want to install MET with Python embedding capability. And in this case, we are going to do that. 
Um, you only need to set the Python module if use modules is set to true. And in this case, it's set to false. So we don't need to worry about that. We're, it's not even in the file. We're not going to set it at all. But we are going to set met Python, which is the location of the Python bin, include, lib, and share directories. And so I didn't want to forget which version I was using. So I, I went ahead and put it here. I'm going to copy that. And these, these paths under here, which we haven't talked about yet, they're not quite complete. But you can see I am referencing the variable I said above. So the next two things we need to set are met Python CC and met Python LD. And CC is uh, dash I for include, followed by the directory containing the Python include files. And you can see an example here. And then met Python LD is the dash capital L. Um, for the for the library directory, followed by, as it says here, the directory containing the Python library file, then a space and a lowercase dash l, followed by the necessary Python libraries to link to. Um, and in this example, if you don't put it in quotes, the backslashes are necessary to escape the, the spaces. So what are these things, and, and how do you get them? Um, sometimes it's easy to get the values for MetPython CC and MetPython LD by running these commands right here, uh, Python 3-config-c flags. But sometimes it gives you too much information, and, and you don't need to include all of that. So let's take a look and see what our Python 3 config gives us back. What information does it tell us? So we can see here the dash i along with the path. and Although, however, we actually don't want to use this Python, which is why I had put that in the file. So let's take a look at that again, see which Python we were using, and we'll, we'll call the command with the appropriate version of Python that we want to use. So bin python3 c flags. So here I'm telling it the exact version. I'm giving it the full path to the Python3 config that I want to use. Here we go. And so uh, maybe that was the right one. I'm not even sure. I guess it was, but it doesn't hurt to be clear and add the extra path. In any case, you can see there's a bunch of extra things here. We don't need any of that. Um, this, this first dash i is actually repeated twice. We don't need it twice. So, And I know that I have this path up to here. So the only part of this I need, because I've already got um, this area here, I know it's a longer path. Let's just prove to ourselves that. This is the same. So we're going to take the shortened path here and paste it in and just make sure that that directory exists with our include files. And it does here. We see a bunch of .h files. That's exactly what we want. So this is the path we need, only I've already filled in this portion of it. And I'll show you that again as we pull it up. OK, so we've got our MetPython base already set up. And now we just need to throw on include Python shape. That's all. Oops, except I just noticed I'm plugging this into the LD. I have this reversed from what I have in the tutorial. So let's just switch those around so we're in the right order. OK. All right, so then how do we get met Python LD? Again, we're going to run the same thing, except with the dash dash LD flags this time. And the things we need to make sure that we have, we need to ensure that there's a capital dash L with a library path. Sometimes that's missing from this command, and then you need to kind of search for it. Luckily, um, if you found your include file, the lib directory is likely at the same level, so it should be pretty easy to find. Um, and then sometimes. Um, the dash L doesn't give you all the things you need. So we'll look at that just in just a second, because I believe this machine shows exactly that. So instead of dash dash C flags, we're going to do dash dash LD flags. And we do have a path in this case. We have the dash L with the whole path. And then we have some libraries here that we need to pass along. Uh, the, the L dash M is repeated twice. We don't have to use it twice. But the thing that's missing here, the important thing, is the Python library. It's not listed there. So we need to make sure we include that. But we don't know exactly what the name is. Sometimes, as you can see over here, there's an M at the end, um, even for the library, as you can see here. Um, but sometimes there's not. So we need to find the library and see what its name should be. So we will go ahead and do that. We're going to look here at this location. 
I think it's right here in the lib directory. So we'll just take a quick look. And we can see the file is simply Python 3.8. There's no M. So that's all we need is lib slash Python 3.8. And then we'll copy the rest of these. I'm just going to get the dash LM once because we don't need it twice. So we'll open up the file again. And we'll set this to lib Python 3.8. And as I mentioned, if we don't have this in quotes, um, we need to backslash the spaces. So we're just going to add in that dash L Python 3.8, because we know we have to have that. It is necessary uh, for the linker to know both the directory as well as all the libraries. And that Python library is essential. Give an extra space. And OK, so now we're all set up hopefully for our Python requirements. So going back over here, we are then going to take a look at this one. This is another environment. Oops, sorry about that. This is another environment variable, and this is a set D64 bit flag. Um, basically, for the grib to C library, uh, sometimes it's compiled with a D64 bit flag, and sometimes it is not. And MET needs it to be used for both or for neither. So the scripts by default, will uh, install the grib to c library without the d64 bit option and since we are using the script to to install the grib to c library we're going to set this to false because we know that that is how we are installing uh, the grib to c library that is actually all we need but the rest of the stuff below um, is commented out as you can see there are pound symbols in front of the export statements so they're not being used uh, there's not one here we can go ahead and throw one in there um, but basically, if you've already compiled these libraries and you don't need to compile them again, all you need to do is set these variables and they won't be compiled again. So for example, if you um, start to install the script and only a few libraries get installed and you don't want to have to reinstall each library again, uh, the script will tell you which libraries it has installed. So you can go ahead and, and set set these as necessary uh, for the order it's gone in if you've gotten successful builds for some but not all of them. Um, right now we're not gonna we're not gonna show that, but we will show that in our WCOS example because all of these will be set. So this is this slide just lists um, again what if they're not all necessary, then you just set some of those or all of those, whatever you need. Um, but by default, the scripts will attempt to install all of the dependent libraries. So if you don't want them to do that, you just set these variables listed here. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and oops, run the installation. And so to run the installation, we just give the name of our script and then we pass in the configuration file. And you can see here, it gives you some output information and tells you what you set your variables to. It's setting the LD library path before it uh, attempts to compile, um, tells you where it's compiling the libraries to. So it's creating an external libs directory, and all of the external libraries will be compiled in that location. There will be a bin include and lib directory there um, where we'll copy everything it needs. Um, it shows you here, you can confirm, yes, it's using the right compiler. It's not using Intel, but rather GNU that I asked it to. It tells me which Python version it's using. And then um, it is starting to compile a GSL, which is uh, the first library it, 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 use, it compiles. So that's going to work in the background. And we're going to go ahead and we'll start installing Met Plus while that um, while that does its thing, and we'll check back on it to see how it's going. So, um, likewise for Met Plus, we want to set up an installation directory and go to that location. And so I had already made myself a Met Plus directory, so we'll go in there. And I had prepared a run script, which um, when we run our test case, so we'll look at that later. But for right now, the first thing we need to do is to get the desired release from the GitHub Met Plus release page and unpack it. So we can go take a look at, oops, this is the wrong window. We can go take a look at the Met Plus repository and go over to releases. And this is what we want. We're going to go ahead and install beta 5 for Met Plus. And if we click on assets, we can see here that we've got a source code package, which is what I have linked to in uh, these directions. So we'll get this, this tar file for beta 5, and then we'll unpack the tar file. All right. 
So we can see here we've got the, the tar file and the unpacked tar file. We don't need the tar file anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. And we've got what we need. OK, so next, uh, we want to make a directory for sample data because we want to be able to test our installation to make sure that we have everything set up correctly. So I'll go ahead and make a sample data directory, and then we'll, we'll change directories into that directory. OK, and so here we are. And now what we want to do is to get and unpack the sample data, which is linked to, um, which is linked in the Met plus GitHub repository under each release. So let's go back to that page. And we can see here it says input data used to run the test cases can be found here. So we'll go ahead and click on that link. And you can see there's a bunch of uh, sample data here. We only need to demonstrate one here, so I just grabbed the smallest package from the slides. And we will go ahead and, and use that. So it was the space weather package. So we'll run a space weather use case. And what we're doing here, we're, we're getting the data, we're going to unpack the data, and then we're going to remove the tar file because we won't need that anymore. So all that should be done. And yet we can see it's unpacked here into the model applications directory. OK, so now we can go back up a level out of our sample data directory. And let's see what else we need to do. Um, if we are using this, if we're installing this for sort of a, a group of people, it would be good to modify uh, the defaults directory, uh, I'm sorry, the defaults file directly. Um, you could also override these values in your own, in your own file, um, which we'll talk about later, because we're all going to create a user configuration file. But I'm going to pretend that I'm installing this for a group of people, and I want the Met installation directory to be set up for them so they don't have to find the Met installation. So I know that we were installing METs in this directory, zero. And I know that once it's finished, the bin directory will be right at this location. And so I'm going to copy that whole thing. And that's what we're going to use for our install, our MET installer. So we need to go ahead and open the default configuration file. And again, you can override these values in your own file. But just to show you, if you want to set it here, you can do that. Here's met installer right here. It says path two. So that means that this needs to be filled in with an appropriate directory. And here we have um, met bender. You can also change this value um, in the script if you want to. On WCOS, uh, the, the code is not installed in a bin directory, but rather in an, in an exec directory. And we'll talk about that later. But for right now, we know that by default, the script is going to be installed in a bin directory, and that that's right there. So that's, that's perfect. Let's see what else we need to do. And I'm going to go ahead and set input base up so that anyone who wants to use the shared installation will already have data in the, in the directory that we just put it in. And they can use that to test the installation if they want to. So let's see. If we go back out we have our sample data directory. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this full path. And that will be the location of our input base. Oops. We're going to Emacs that file again, or whatever editor you like to use. And we're going to find input base, and it's right near the top. And that also says path two. So you will need to say your input base. Now, we'll set it right here, like I said, to the sample data editor. But we're not going to set output base in this directory, because that would be different for all of our users. And while users may wish to switch their, switch their input base, maybe they're just learning MET in the sample data directory is just fine for them. And they can always override that if they want to. But it doesn't really make sense to set output base here. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to set input base and MET installer. OK. So going back up to this level, we want to go ahead and create a user config file. And so I'll just create a user config file here. And I'll just name it uh, the name of the machine, my username, and conf. And then I'm going to go ahead and set output base. Oops, spell that correctly. Output base. And it needs an underscore and an equals. And I forgot to grab the path, so I'm just going to save that and exit out. So I don't have an output directory here. I'm just going to go ahead and put the output in my met plus directory right here, if I can 
spell that correctly eventually. Okay, so we'll take this path and we'll just add output onto it. And that's where we will put our output. All right, so now I've got output base set up that will override the defaults file when we run a case. And the next thing we need to do is let our system know uh, where run met plus is, where, where run met plus is. So we're going to add that to our path environment variable. And I'm, we're going to do that in the script. So um, because this example here shows path two, I went ahead and, and prepared the command ahead of time. So we'll just take a look at the run script that I had already prepared. And you can see here we set the path, and I'm setting it to uh, this directory. And we know, I know that the run met plus script is in the USH directory. So I'll just take a look at that with you in just a minute. And then we want to include anything that was previously on path before. So that'll come after. So now we have path set up with our path to run met plus.py. And then here's the sample command that we're going to run. We're going to say run met plus, and um, we're going to give it this command here. You can't really see that, so let's scroll down some. And Okay, um, so we give it the whole path here, and I can show you where I got this from. This is a, a use case that's in our documentation, and then you can see here I've given it the full path to my config file. So the fact that this config file is being in, passed in last shows that it's going to overwrite um, all any settings that come before it. So the output base, if there was any in this in this uh, first config file, it's going to be overridden by the last file passed to it. So let me show you, let's see, go, here it is. I've got this link here. I'm going to copy. Hmm. It's not showing up. Let's see. OK, well, it's grid stat analysis validation under space weather. So let's go ahead and go to our documentation. This is not it. We've got met plus right here. So let's go to the user's guide and use cases, model applications. And I know it was space weather, so we'll click there. And let's see, what did we say it was called? It was at grid stat analysis validation, and here's that case. And so here's a bunch of information for the specific use case, and we're not going to go into detail about that. Um, but anything you need to know about running this use case is, is documented nicely here, hopefully. Um, and if we scroll down, it'll tell us how to run it, and that is where I took the command from. OK, so here you have it. This is the same command we have, except as I indicated, we've had to replace path to. So we can just scroll on over, and then the path to your user system config file. So that's where I got that from and how I filled that file. And so now to run the command, let me make sure I made this executable, actually. And it is, so we should be all set. So I should just be able to run this command. Well, actually, can't run it unless we know MET is finished installing. And it's not. So we need to wait here momentarily until this completes so that we make sure we have the executables we want to use. At this point, I guess, um, does anyone have any questions so far about, about anything we've done? Don't see any comments in the chat. Feel free to raise a hand if you need to. OK, well, maybe let's see. Let's see what executables we have available to us, and let's see what we're using for this use case. Nothing yet. OK, so we definitely can run that. So let's go ahead, and we'll just take a quick look at the Met plus configuration file, and we can see um, what it is that we're using. Oops. OK, some comments up there. Uh, looks like we're referring to a certain model file we need, model level, a masker. Um, we're using a grid stat mask poly as defined here. Um, we're just using grid stat, it looks like. So that's the only application, the only met application that we need to use. And uh, we're looping over valid times. We've got the valid time format specified, valid begin an end in the increments. And we've got our lead sequence of zero. 
let's see what else we have in here. Um, let's see, loop ordered times. Did I, I already saw that said, oh, maybe not. Loop by valid, okay. Loop by valid and loop order of times. Choose there for a second. Let's see, okay, and then we've got um, the grid stat uh, config file being used. Um, and we're letting it know this file type says uh, that the type of file we're using is a CF compliant NetCDF file, so that uh, he made sure to set that. We've got uh, the various output flags we need, which is just the stat file that we want for each run. And um, some other variables set here, we're identifying the model forecast and the observation data. It looks like the forecast variable we want is tech. And the levels are being set in and in, in windows of zero for both forecast and obs. It looks like we're using a width of one in the sh square shape for neighborhood statistics. We've got um, other settings here, thresholds being set. And then we've got our output prefix name where you can specify uh, how you want your output file to be named. Then we've got our directories here, our input directory for the forecast and observations. And then the file name templates are below. The output there is set above as well. Various templates so it can find the files it needs. And that is the end of the file. See how we're doing over here. Oh, it looks like there was a problem. This is interesting. I did test this and we didn't have any problems. So let's see what we can do to debug this then and see what the problem seems to be. Um, we'll go into the met directory and we will go ahead and look at our make file, make.log, and we're gonna search for error. And we're gonna try to see where we have an error. Now that is just the name of a file. We can scroll on by that. And here we go. It can't find Python, so perhaps we did not give it the correct directory. So let's see what the problem is. It needs, oh no, it's linking lpython 3.8. So for some reason, let's see what we specified. We said that it could find the file here. So let's take a look. What did we do wrong? Lib 3.8. Maybe, oh, it was a directory. Let's see here. Oops. Okay. Oh, you know, I forgot to put the lib in front of the Python. I'm guessing maybe I needed that. Let's take a look and see. Let's cheat a little bit and look back at the file I used when I ran this successfully so that I don't waste too much of your time and we can get to the other use case that we want. All right. So let's see what we did here. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is, but it looks like I had quotes. Maybe, maybe I had a problem with my backslashes. I'm not sure. I'm gonna go ahead and copy these and we'll just paste those in. Um, I think for this set, I wasn't sure if I could use the quotes with the environment variable. It looks like I can. That's how I did it before. So we don't need those backslashes in, in, in that case. So let's go ahead and use what we had here. And we'll paste this in. And I'll get rid of this. I'm still not exactly sure what the problem is. That, that looks right to me. Oh, maybe, oh, I see, I know, I see what the problem is. So you can see here I specified an extra directory here and I didn't need that. So if I had just taken that away and actually let's just prove that this also works and see what the issue was. Let's go ahead and remove that Python 3.8 and just leave it as lib, which should then work. All right, so we'll rerun that except now, we don't want to install all the external libraries again, right? Because we just did that. So um, we don't want to take the time necessary for it to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the test space. And as we showed earlier, um, the libraries were being put in an external libs directory. And I know that it installed these libraries successfully. So I can just uncomment all of these, which were already set up for myself. 
in case something like this happened. So um, these are all set to where all these external libraries were put. And um, some of them are broken out with a, with a lib or an include. And if they're not, then it will look in the appropriate lib and include directory there. So those are all set up. And we'll try running that. Again, this time we'll show you how it skips the installation of the external libraries. So you can see it went straight to compiling MET instead of compiling GSL like it did before. So the script is doing exactly what we would expect. Now, at this point, I had I had intended to hand it over to John O later in the presentation to go over a survey, but John, maybe now is a good time for you to talk about that if you if you're ready and you don't mind. If you're not ready, that's fine. No, I can definitely take over just for a couple minutes. Great, thank you. Yep. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's John Opaths uh, again with the uh, with you to share a second survey. Um, I'm dropping the link in the message, and we'll attach this to the agenda as well um, at the end of the session. Um, just like the last one, there are seven questions, so very, very brief. Um, you'll actually see a lot of them that look the same. They're asking for feedback on each of the hands-on sessions as well as the presentations for each of the sessions since the last um, check-in that we had or evaluation. So for this one, we're going to do, we're going to start at the session four repeat, which some of you weren't able to attend the first session because I believe that was at the same time AMS was going on, um, or maybe it was the holiday. And, um, that'll go all the way through. This one will go all the way through session 10. So quite a few, uh, quite a bit more session feedbacks we're asking for, um, as well as a little bit of feedback on that Q&A session that we had on January 25th. Uh, but hopefully this shouldn't take you more than about five minutes tops. Um, that's less than a minute per question. Uh, I think that's actually being pretty generous if you spend a minute per question. Um, but this really does help us formulate how these things flow, how they go. Um, we really do uh, value your feedback and we appreciate anything in all honesty um, that comes from these because uh, we're not doing this for us, we're doing this for you. Um, we, we know Met Plus more or less while well, I'm still learning it, but um, it, we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that this is catered to y'all. Uh, we don't want to leave any of you behind. We want to make sure you're getting your time's worth with these. Um, so please fill them out. Be as brutally honest, but at least constructive as you can. Um, and I think we'll probably have this up for about a week um, for feedback. And uh, we'll if we uh, if we aren't seeing too many feedbacks, probably by the end of or too many results by the end of this week, we might send out a little um, survey reminder. Um, later in this week. But again, seven questions shouldn't take too long. And thank you for all of your time on this. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is still building. That's okay. We will um, we will finish up this run of Met Plus as soon as that finishes. In the meantime, there's no harm in moving along to our next slide, where we are going to talk about um, the installation of Met and Met Plus. Yes, with pre-installed dependent libraries, as we actually ended up just demonstrating, um, but also where modules are used. So basically, um, in order to do this, you would follow the same procedure as described in the previous slides. However, in this case, you don't need the tar files package because we're assuming that all the packages are already on the machine um, that you're using. So. Um, so there are some modifications to the configuration file, as I'll show you momentarily. Um, for example, if you're using modules, you'll need to list the module load commands at the top of the configuration file. And um, if you're using modules and you need to determine the locations of the libraries, you can use the print env command, which I'll also show you. Um, but to avoid duplicating efforts and saving us time um, on the machine w costs, I did uh, already follow the same instructions that we had done previously um, in the first portion of the hands-on. And you can see that we still have a tar files directory, and that is because we still need the MET package. But that is the only tar file that exists here. So looking at our install metenv.del file, we'll see some differences. You can see that here we are loading the modules we need, which are IPS in this case is the Intel compiler. And that's how we need to load that. We're loading um, Met Python. Uh, I mean, not Met Python. We're loading Python for Met um, and for Met Plus. And then we've got the NetCDF library and version, HDF, buffer, Zlib, Jasper, libpng, GSL, and G2C. 
and then it'll start to look familiar. So our test space in this case is set to the directory we're currently in now where we want to install it. Um, I go ahead and set the lib directory, which I, I'm assuming I reference later. That's not, uh, that's not required for the script. Um, so I'm, going, I'm setting that up. And then here, as I mentioned earlier, the binder path, we can modify that here. We want the executables to be installed in, in, in an exec directory instead of a bin directory. So that's where we tell it here. We set this additional variable. And then as before, when we set GNU 8.3.0, we're telling it right here. And, and this comes from right up here. Um, and so that's, that will be used later in the scripts to tell it exactly which, which one to load and, and so that it's aware of how you want to compile it. Um, met subdir again is set to met test base. We've got uh, the met tarball listed here. And in this case, we have uh, use modules set to true. And that means that we also want to set this Python module if we want to have the Python embedding. And we set it to Python underscore 3.6.3, .3, and that will uh, let it know to do a module load within the script. And so then we've got our met Python and met Python CC variable set up as well. And then you can see all of our other uh, variables which were set up here. And so after we do those loads, you know, it's like, well, gee, I'm not familiar with this machine. I don't know where anything is. So, so how do I know where to point for these things? So let, and, and, and how do I know what to name these files here? So those are things that we got from here. Um, if we load all of these things in our shell, As I mentioned, I can then use print E and V and find the locations. So if I grew up for net CDF, oh, OK, look at this. I can see the include files listed multiple times, but they're in this directory. That's that's where I can find those. Or what if I want to grow up for buffer? Um, well, buffer's not the best example. Let's see what buffer. This took me a while to figure out um, exactly which one I needed. I don't remember the details of that. Otherwise, I would explain it to you here. But if you ever end up where you have any problems, just let me know um, in through a GitHub discussion, and we'll help you figure out what you need. Uh, let's see, the other one was the grid to c library we needed to know the name of. So let's look for that one as well. Um, it's g to c is how they refer to it here. Yeah, and so that's how we got the name of the library we needed, which differs from what we had over here. You can see. This file, um, it's installed with, this is the default name, but on this machine, it was installed with a different name because we weren't the ones who installed it and, and they chose a different name. So uh, looking at this file again, we can we can continue going down and we see again here, um, we know by talking with the sysadmins that the D64-bit flag was not used to um, compile the grib to c lib, so grib to c library, so we set it to false here. So all these are set very similarly um, and we can go ahead and get this install running, and then we'll go back and run the other met plus case. So we're going to do the same thing here. We've got our file all set up. We'll run the compile script. And we'll see, again, prints out all the information we wanted. We can verify we're using the Intel compiler. And we can see it skipped the installation of any dependent libraries and is compiling met. We'll let that run. And yep, we talked about everything we wanted to here. And I find it distracting with that other one down there, so I'm just going to switch screens. And OK, it's all good. So now we are here, and we want to we can go ahead and run that command, because we should have our grid stat file executable available to us. OK, and it looks like it says there's no section headers is the error I can see here. So maybe I thought I didn't need the dir. Uh, section header, but perhaps I do. So let's try setting dir and see if that is what the problem is. That is what I did when I tested, and we'll see if that is what it needed. That is what it needed. So um, George McCabe, unfortunately, isn't here to clarify. I, I really thought that the section header wasn't needed. I don't know if anyone else in our, in our team can speak to why that was being required. Um, if not, maybe we can follow up on that next time. But we can see that right now, after adding that section header in, that met plus successfully finished running, which is what we had hoped to see here. Confirm that you received the message that met plus is successfully finished running. Um, there's also a log file here. 
um, which we can take a quick look at. I see the installation on WCOS isn't quite done. So if we want to um, go into our output directory, um, we can see that we have a log directory, which would show us much of the same information printed to the screen. Uh, I'll also mention this met plus final config file. This is really nice and handy for debugging. If we take a quick look at that, we can see um, our section headers here, like, like dir was set before. We have a config section here. And we have all of the things that were set in the config file here, listed here. So it's kind of nice to have it in one place, especially if you have a lot of various config files or, or many things set, for example, in your user config file. Um, we know that, it, that this ran fine with output base because previously in the default config file, we saw that it was set to path two and it wouldn't run if something was set to path two. So if we search for, oh, it's output base. My apologies, not output dir, output base. Okay. If we search for output base, well, we can see it's being referenced there and there and there. I'm actually looking for the definition of it and here it is. So we can see that our, um, giving it our user config file did in fact override the value here. But this is pretty long and anything you have set will be in this file. So if you're not sure what something was set to, you can just go over to your output directory and, and pull it up and take a look to make sure that you have things set to, to how you expected them to be set. So let's go and take a look at our log file. Okay. Um, and so here it's giving us a bunch of information. It's showing the command that was run um, and the log file where the information is being written to, uh, what our met plus base is set to. And here it is showing you the, the final config file. So if you don't remember where that is, that's okay. Just check your log file, it'll show you. Um, it shows any configuration file input right here. And so let's actually go to the end there. Yeah, so we can see that first it, it uses the defaults config file, then it went ahead and used the specific use case file that we were using, and then it used our, um, our own user config file, which is what we had expected. And it shows you here that it's running the met plus grid stat wrapper and at what time. And it's processing all of these values. Again, you can see some of these are set here. Find the other final comp file a little easier to read. So I, I like to look at that one personally. Uh, it tells you here what the MET tool is doing, uh, be gridding, what it's processing. And then again, it's the same thing for the next valid time. So we'll stop taking a look at that. And while WCOS is running here um, for MET, let's just go and take a look at what we have set up for MetPlus because I did the same thing here. I see we only have about 11 minutes left, so I wanna make sure we, we go through some of this as well. Um, here we've got our, our MetPlus directory and our sample data directory. And I did the same thing. I got the smallest package to run the same exact case. Um, so all we have here is our model applications directory with space weather, that's the only thing there. And then here, I also, I already made the output directory. You can see though nothing's in it. And um, we've got our, our command that we're gonna run. Once again, we're setting our path uh, to the run net plus configuration file and adding on what we already had path set to. We've got our um, configuration files here and uh, we're on a different machine. So of course the configuration file is named a little differently. Um, we know from past experience of trying to run that previous case that this was necessary. So I didn't have that in previously, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in now so we don't get that same error. And this should theoretically be all set to run. Um, this is still making the executables, but we can take a look and see if we have grids that available to us yet. Probably not, but it doesn't hurt to take a look. I actually just saw something else to point out to you guys in just a second. Yep, no bin directory yet, so we'll just wait a little bit there. But you can see here on the command line uh, where it, we had previously told it a different bin directory, bin directory to write to, this is where that information is used. It's used in the configure command. So here is the test base directory it set up. And then here is that change in the binder name um, where it gives the whole path. And instead of putting it in a bin directory, it's gonna put it in an exec directory. 
also at configuration time, it needs to know the names of the buffer lib library, which we told it in our configuration file. And it needs to know the name of uh, the grib to clib. And so that's used there as well. Um, and then we've got, uh, we want to enable grib2 and enable Python. So we're doing that as well. And let's see, this is not yet finished, but that's OK. We can take a look. Um, I don't know. This is getting into a bit more of the details. If we go back to the script, just take a look really quick. Sometimes if you're compiling things, you may get a, um, I can't even remember what the error is called, but like error loading shared libraries. And so we use in the script something called our path. And our path should um, set up everything in a way that um, you shouldn't get those errors for, um, for problems with shared libraries. And you shouldn't need to set your LD library path. Everything should be set up for you with our path. So if you're using the script and have any issues like that, please write to discussions because it means maybe this R path isn't working correctly. Uh, you can see here the names of our variables that we said are, are being used in this location. Um, met Python is being set. So that's why um, we not only need to set met Python LD and met Python CC, but we also need to have met Python set so that it can make sure it's using and linking with the correct um, met Python area. So if we take a look again, um, well, in this one, we didn't use it. We could have referenced the met Python here to make this path shorter, but it looks like I didn't do that. Um, we just refer to the whole thing again. But over here, we did do that. We used met Python. Uh, we set it here, and then we used it again here. It kind of is a little cleaner look. But we do need that met Python to be set. It's not redundant information because it is used for that R path value maybe a little more detailed information than you need. Unfortunately, this is still going. Um, let's see. I guess at this point, we may not have time for questions at the end if we run that case. So does anyone have any questions about installation now that you'd like to ask? Let's check the chat here. Um, OK, it looks like that question's already been answered. Thank you, Tara. Um, are there any other questions that anyone has regarding installation of MET or MET Plus? You can see most of the heavy lifting for the installation is done um, with the installation of MET. MET Plus is uh, fairly simplistic with the downloading of the package, unpacking it, and then setting a few values that you need along with grabbing some initial data for your use cases to, to get set up. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward there. I know some of this can be confusing with um, setting all these values and, and whether or not you're using modules. But um, again, um, if you go to our discussions page, if you have any problems, we're, we're happy to help you with that as well. Hey, hey Julie, has John O been able to talk about the survey yet? Yes, he talked about that earlier when we were waiting for the last um, okay. that installation to finish, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you're, absolutely. So it is installing the files now, which means any minute now we should be able to run this case. And there we go. Do we have Gridstat? Because that is all we need. And we do. So let's go ahead and go back to our map plus directory and try to run that case. Let's run command. Oops. And it looks like I didn't make it executable. So let's do that now. Now we'll, now we'll run the command. And no such file or directory, Python 3. OK, so what is the problem? Oh, I didn't load the modules I needed to load. So let's do that. I forgot we were on a machine that was using the module files. So if we go back to directory, we'll get all the ones we need from our configuration file. They are loaded in the other window, but not in this one. OK. I just needed the, the Python and the Intel compiler, but it's just easy to copy them all. And it doesn't hurt anything, so we're all set. Although we may have needed some others. I'm not, not entirely clear. OK, 
it looks like this actually had two errors. <laughs> this did not happen when I was running this previously. So let's just take a look and do some debugging in this last four minutes, see what we can do. Uh, let's see. Search for error again. OK. No, oh, it looks like I did not change the binder. You can see this is set to bin, but as we know, this was set up um, with an exec directory. So let's set the binder differently. And I know that is in parm. Um, net plus, oh, am I not in the right area? Looks like. Let's quickly do this and prove to you that this will work. Parm, uh, net plus config, defaults. And we are going to change this to exec. That is an extra step on this machine that we need to do. And I forgot. But it's good to demonstrate so we can take a look and see what the error looks like and how to go about troubleshooting. Now I expect that to run. Fingers crossed. Medplus has successfully finished running. All right. So that concludes our presentation on installations. And I did have a slide for questions. Uh, however, it seems there, there are none. But if you do have one, please feel free to speak up. All right. Well, you can have two minutes back of your time if you'd like. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a great day.